Welcome, I'm Mark Shanley, and the World Federation of Youth Clubs welcomes you to the 2021 Promise Awards. Our mission is to develop, advance, and enhance global youth organizations that provide a positive environment and safe place for young people around the world. The Promise Awards were created to celebrate your achievements, your hard work, and your dedication to young people. That is truly making a difference in their lives. There are our way of sharing the excellence and impact of youth and youth clubs around the world. Today, we will announce the honorees of our 2021 World Federation of Youth Clubs Promise Award. We would like to give a very special thank you to our presenting sponsor, the UPS Foundation, for their commitment to the World Federation of Youth Clubs and to young people around the world. We'd like to introduce Nikki Clifton, President, Social Impact, and the UPS Foundation. The UPS Foundation's mission is to deliver pathways to empower resilient, just, and safe communities. Our strategy is to combine our philanthropy, our massive global network, and the expertise of more than half a million dedicated UPSers to deliver help where it's needed most around the world. The UPS Foundation delivers health and humanitarian relief to strengthen communities in the wake of health crises and disasters. We're also committed to advancing equity and economic empowerment, leveling the playing field, and making us stronger united. UPS is synonymous with local communities. When it comes to volunteerism, our brown army of employees serve millions of volunteer hours each year around the globe. We're dedicated to advancing environmental justice and a sustainable world by creating healthier communities to protect our planet. Thank you, Nikki, and the UPS Foundation. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Glenn Permoy, president and co-founder of the World Federation of Youth Clubs, who will introduce our very special guest speaker. Hi, I'm Glenn Permoy, the president of the World Federation of Youth Clubs, coming to you today from sunny Florida here in the United States. It's my pleasure to be with you. This program is dear to my heart, an idea that came to me a few years ago, and with the help of our great World Federation of Youth Club staff, it is now reality. My thanks to all of you for tuning in today, and thank you to UPS Foundation for its commitment to youth and celebrating their global achievements. I would like to especially acknowledge Nikki Clifton and the UPS Foundation for their company's commitment to improving equity and economic empowerment in places where the need is the greatest. The World Federation of Youth Clubs is committed to providing opportunities for young people around the globe to develop skills and connect with others and see a world full of possibilities. We started the organization out of an urgent need to help youth serving organizations around the world enhance their services to further advance the potential of those youth they were serving and when possible to reach even more youth. Today, we support 70 organizations in 36 countries that have more than 3,400 locations, reaching over 360,000 young people. The World Federation of Youth Clubs provides targeted, high-touch, capacity-building services with the hope that when investing and developing leaders, we will make good organizations great, thus developing even more positive young people. We'd also like to thank the BCM Foundation for their generous planning grant that made this global recognition program possible, as well as Mr. Edward Marsh for his personal financial support to help further this concept. I would also like to thank Rick and Susan Goings, our founders, whose visionary support took a seed of an idea and became the World Federation of Youth Clubs. And now it is my honor to bring to the virtual stage our special guest, Elizabeth Yamayaro. But first, a little about this amazing woman. She is a special advisor to the United Nations Food Program, a program that saves lives in emergencies and changes lives for millions through sustainable development. She was raised in Zimbabwe and during her early years experienced tragedy and hardship due to famine and civil unrest. It was at that time where Elizabeth came into contact with UN Relief Works and her life changed forever. She served as a special advisor to the United Nations under General Secretary 
as well as the executive director of the UN Women and head of UN's He for She movement. Additionally, she's a recent author of an outstanding book, I Am a Girl from Africa. And now, please welcome Elizabeth Yamayaro. Dare to dream a dream for others. We are often taught that a dream should be a dream for ourselves, for our own individual pursuit. But the truth is that a dream can be for one and it can also be for many. I grew up in a small African village where I was raised by my gogo, my grandmother. One day, Gogo looked at me and said, as Africans, we must dream big. I was too young to understand her words, so I asked her to explain. And she said, because there are plenty of us Africans, my dear child, so your dream has to be big enough for all of us. Your dream must be a dream for others. It was the first time I became aware of how as an African, I was supposed to dream. I understood that my dream also needed to be a dream for my family, my community and fellow Africans. I learned that my dream should improve the lives of others. And most importantly, Gogo taught me that as long as my dream benefited others, it would ultimately benefit me. This and other pivotal moments in my childhood sparked my dream to become a humanitarian, ultimately leading to a career with the United Nations, where I currently serve as a special advisor. Today, we celebrate the World Federation of Youth Club Promise Awards which serve as a reminder of the power of youth to create the change that is urgently needed in our world today. Through your activism, you have all shown what is possible when we dare to dream a dream for others. You are changing the lives of others for the better in your communities through your actions. Your passion and conviction in standing up for what is right has reminded us once again that it is often the unsung heroes who end up changing the world. So as you accept your awards today, may this moment be a catalyst to engage more youth in your communities to follow your lead. As the largest youth population in history, at 1.8 billion, your generation has the power and potential to create a world that is more just, more equal, and more sustainable. Now more than ever, we need more youth to take on the rising challenges that face our world and make it better for all of us. Just imagine what is possible if more of you dared to dream a dream for others? When Pakistani youth activist Malala Yousafzai was shot for going to school, she dared to dream a dream for others, demanding the right to education for all girls around the world. When Swedish youth activist Greta Thunberg witnessed the devastation caused by climate change. She dared to dream a dream for others, galvanizing global action to make all our lives better. When Malawi youth activist Memory Banda fought against child marriage, she dared to dream a dream for others, successfully advocating to make child marriage illegal for all girls and boys in a home country of Malawi. Most importantly, you too have dared to dream a dream for others. And today, we thank you 
and celebrate your activism. I wish you all a wonderful ceremony. Thank you, Glenn, and a very special thank you to Elizabeth Yamayaro. You are an inspiration to all of us, but especially to young people around the world. Your message of dreaming big, but not just dreaming for yourself, but dreaming big for others is truly inspirational. And I wanna thank you, and I wanna thank your grandmother, your go-go, for that message to the young people around the world. The Promise Awards is the World Federation of Youth Clubs commitment to young people around the world. To the youth clubs, you have made promises to young people and committed your clubs are a safe place for them to go, where they are valued and protected. We want to recognize that. It is our promise to be there as you are there for your community. The 2021 Promise Awards recognizes excellence, leadership, and innovation. Our award categories feature the amazing work of programs, leadership, and youth. We received so many wonderful nominations, and we were truly inspired by the work of the clubs. We wish we could honor each and every one of the nominees who each have incredible stories. We will celebrate your successes in other ways because you are all deserving of that recognition. To determine the awardees, we brought together an amazing group of leaders from Care USA, Special Olympics Europe Eurasia, the One Campaign, Boys and Girls Clubs of America, inspired by Mona Foundation and the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation. These amazing professionals served with distinction and dedication as part of the 2021 Promise Awards Selection Committee. Our first two awards we are presenting are in the category of programs honoring the innovation and the impact of youth programs. I'm proud to introduce Scott Swenson, who will present the first award, the Program Innovation Award. He will be followed by David Evangelista, who will present the Program Impact Award. Hello everyone, I'm Scott Swinson from the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation, joining you from Baltimore, Maryland in the United States. My passion lies in working with children who live in underserved and distressed communities. There are so many amazing young boys and girls in these communities who just need the right mentors, the right programs, or just the right opportunities in order to shine. As mentors, it's our responsibility to make sure these children are cared for and give them plenty of opportunities to learn, play, and hopefully grow into caring adults who are mentors for others around the world. Our first Promise Award in the program category goes to a program that's helping children and their families make education a priority. Since its inception, this program has increased enrollment, decreased the dropout rate, and increased its academic performance from a 25% pass rate to 85%. But what really stood out to me about this program is that it's not being done by just one person. It's successful because it's supported by the entire community, from parents to teachers, to volunteers, to others donating uniforms for the students and furniture for their classrooms. Support and belief from others like this will help this program continue to be successful in the future. The Program Award for Program Innovation, I'm honored to tell you, goes to Education First Initiative and in the Boys and Girls Club of Ghana. Now let's listen in and learn more about this initiative. Ghana has made progress in improving education for all, but there are still many challenges that prevent more than 600,000 primary school-age children from attending school, with additional gaps in education for girls and children with disabilities. The Boys and Girls Club of Ghana witnessed educational gaps themselves in 2013 when they learned that there were more children out of school in their community than in school. 
To address this urgent need, club coordinator Stephen Kwanza and club CEO Dr. Patricia Isilfi developed the Education First initiative. They began a campaign, parental meetings, a task force, engaged volunteer teachers, and formed a mobile school. Volunteers began walking through the community at 6 o'clock every morning, informing children and families about the importance of getting an education. The results have been incredible. School enrollment increased by 30% in the first six months. The dropout rate decreased, and the community rallied around the effort by donating school uniforms and furniture. Within two years, academic success grew from a 25% pass rate to an 85% pass rate, and the effort didn't stop there. Volunteers established a private kindergarten and nursery school, and best practices from the initiative were shared with other clubs in Ghana who have now implemented similar programs. There are now 315 children enrolled at the nursery school and over 1,000 children in the Education First initiative. Congratulations to the Education First initiative and the Boys and Girls Club of Ghana, Gamoa Dago branch, for receiving the first ever World Federation of Youth Clubs Promise Award for Program Innovation. very much um I'm so so excited i don't know i don't know i've longed for a day like this i've longed for volunteers have longed for uh sometimes we feel like we are not heard so we mobilize our local resources for this we've been doing this for over eight years and no one seemed to hear about us and so today if this has happened that it's a serious dream that has come true. The whole World Federation of Youth Club recognizing our efforts. Ah, so excited. So, so excited. I, I mean, wow. I think the video speaks for itself. This is just an incredible program with an incredible group of people behind it that's making a huge impact on these children. Congratulations to Education First Initiative, Stephen, and the entire team at the Boys and Girls Club of Ghana your work is astounding, and I can't thank you all for that you have done for the children of your community. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is David Evangelista, President and Managing Director of Special Olympics Europe Eurasia. It is an honor to be part of the first ever Promise Awards issued by the World Federation of Youth Clubs. Uh, I wanna thank the World Federation for the opportunity to participate, to be inspired by so many incredible youth leaders and the projects that are making this world a better place for all of us. It's a pleasure to follow Scott uh, in, 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 in highlighting our second program award, a project that moved me from the moment I saw it. So many of us around the world understand the power of youth, but so many of us still need to understand the depth and innovation that comes from empowering youth to bring their vision of a better world to the forefront. This is the, this is the perhaps most inclusive generation in all of human history. They are not keen to follow the traditions of the past, but rather keen to create a future that is inclusive, welcoming, and one in which all of us can share. And this project, uh, the project that will win uh, th this, this program award, exemplifies wonderfully this vision of a new world and a new future for all of us. It's the first of its kind in, the, in, 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 in its country, first ever, and one that has attracted a great deal of visibility, but more importantly, one that has created tremendous, sustained, positive impact for people who need it most. It is a pleasure for me to share that the Kadasa Teenage Pregnancy Center of the Petrozoe Initiative is the winner of this year's Program Impact Award. Let's watch a little bit more about the project here. In Uganda, poverty, gender-based violence, HIV AIDS, child marriage, and low participation in secondary education make it difficult for young people to fulfill their potential. Adolescent girls are particularly vulnerable. Half are married before their 18th birthday, and one in every four babies is born to a teenage mother. 
Despite being commonplace, teenage mothers are often stigmatized by their families and communities, leading to homelessness, illegal abortions, and suicide. Unfortunately, the government has no programs for this population of youth. The Petros Zoe Initiative is helping to fill this gap through their life-saving Kadasha Teenage Pregnancy Center. Kadasha is a Hebrew word meaning something new. This residential center is one of a kind in Uganda, providing a safe space for expectant teenage mothers to stay for up to one year after giving birth. Often arriving at Kadasha as victims of trauma, these young mothers need time to heal physically and emotionally. Kadasha provides a holistic program designed to improve their overall health and well-being and prepare them to sustain their new family. Participants are provided free housing, food and nutrition, medical and counseling services, parenting classes, vocational skill training, business and finance classes, and legal assistance. The program's goal is for each young mother to transition back into the community as a whole and productive member of society with new opportunities and a safe living situation for mother and baby. Kadasha currently has 20 girls, 16 babies, and five more on the way, with the hope to provide a chance for many more young mothers and babies to start something new. Congratulations to Petro Zoe Initiative and the Kadasha Teenage Pregnancy Center for receiving the first ever World Federation of Youth Clubs Promise Award for Program Impact. Woo! That's awesome. Uh, I feel amazing about winning this program. Uh, this program has not been a, uh, an easy road to start. Um, it's come with a lot of challenges and it's continuing to have very many challenges. Um, but for somebody to recognize the significance of what we are doing in Uganda is incredible. Um, so I'm, I'm so honored. I'm so humbled. And I know the entire team in Uganda is also going to be so excited. Um, and just, uh, feel proud to to have our work recognized and um, the the transformation going on in young people's lives recognized through that program. So thank you so much. And so once again, on behalf of all of us at Special Olympics, on behalf of the World Federation, our, 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 our panelists, our judges, but most importantly for me personally, a big thanks and a huge extension of gratitude to the Kadasha Teenage Pregnancy Center, the Petro Zoe Initiative, Erin and her colleagues, for doing all you can to bring a renewed future to those who need it most at a time when it's needed most. From all of us, a big thanks for your inspiration and your example. All the best. Thank you, Scott, and thank you, David, for presenting these two very important awards on programs. And congratulations to Education First Initiative Program, Boys and Girls Clubs of Ghana, and the Kadasha Teen Pregnancy Center Petroso Initiative in Uganda. Each of these programs demonstrate the importance of the software, the work, the programs that the clubs are providing to change the lives of young people and put them back on a path of success. Our next category is leadership, honoring the staff, board members, or volunteers working to transform lives. We would now like to recognize two awardees in the leadership category. Presenting the Leadership Pioneer Award is Marilyn Tom, and she will be followed by Lorraine Orr, who will present the Leadership Excellence Award. Hello, everyone. I'm Marilyn Tom with Care USA, joining you from Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. I'm continually inspired by the fresh thinking, creativity, boldness, and passion in our youth around the world. The youth of today aren't afraid to hold back. They're brave in asking the questions we as adults often shy away from. We have so much to learn from them. It is so important, especially during these complex times, that we uplift their voices, encourage them to explore, and provide the necessary ingredients for them to bloom and grow. Our first leadership award goes to a person who recognizes the importance of having positive role models for children. Connecting them to professionals in the community who they can look up to engage with and see firsthand where an education can take them. I was particularly inspired by this individual's community activism 
in launching an initiative to enroll over 3,000 out-of-school children, where many often resort to child labor fishing activities at the expense of their education. This individual's innovative thinking made online learning possible during the pandemic, and his continuous energy and passion brought the inaugural Chicken Cup football competition to his community recently in celebration of International Youth Day on August 12th. I'm thrilled to announce the Promise Award for Leadership Pioneer goes to Stephen Kwanzaa of the Boys and Girls Club of Ghana. Let's learn more about Stephen. Gamoa Dago is a fishing community of about a thousand people located on the central Ghanaian coast. Traditionally, unemployment rates were high, school participation rates were low, and no one in the area had ever gone to a university. Then, in 2010, Stephen Kwanzaa arrived in the community with the goal to end poverty. A tireless advocate for education as a way to lift people up, Stephen quickly became an agent of change. He was instrumental in launching the Education First initiative that encourages children to enroll in school. For this initiative, Stephen has done everything from coordinate volunteers and solicit donations to take children to school and teach groups of children on the beach. Stephen's energy and tenacity have led to extraordinary results with incredible gains in enrollment and academic success. But Stephen's impact goes well beyond the Education First initiative. He has created an entire educational ecosystem by building community alliances, engaging volunteers, and ensuring child protection and parental empowerment. There is now a vocational program, a mentoring program, and a higher education fund. Stephen has also rescued children from illegal child labor in fishing, supported youth in developing their natural skills, and provided students with funding to support their educational goals. Stephen now supports clubs across Ghana, serving over 3,000 children. He's currently building four classroom blocks, educating the community about COVID-19, and is so proud to have helped six of his club members obtain scholarships to study abroad, including an accountant, a lawyer, and a doctor. Stephen's tireless efforts ensure that every young person he meets has more opportunities than they ever could have dreamed of before. Congratulations to Stephen Kwanzaa of the Boys and Girls Club of Ghana for receiving the first ever World Federation of Youth Clubs Promise Award for Leadership Pioneer. Oh, oh. <laughs> Every child I meet should be inspired, should be guided, should, be, should have a safe place, an opportunity to develop. And that is what I live to do. Whether paid or unpaid, I don't give a damn. I know that God in his own way reward us. Long live World Federation of Youth Clubs. Long live all the boys and girls clubs. Long live West and Girls Club of Ghana. Long live West and Girls Club of Dego, Ekunfi, and other places. I'm so excited. Thank you. Congratulations, Stephen. Your work is significantly impacting the lives and transforming the futures of so many children in Ghana. You're truly an inspiration, and we can't wait to see what you accomplish next. And now, I would like to turn it over to my friend, Lorraine Orr, who will present the second Leadership Award. Thank you, Marilyn. And my name is Lorraine Orr, and I'm the Chief Operations Officer for Boys and Girls Clubs of America here in Atlanta, Georgia. And as I learned about the person that we're going to recognize today, I could not help but to think about the power of individuals and the power of, of strong adults in the lives of young people, particularly young people that we focus on every single day who we want to see succeed in life at every level. So I, I wanna tell you just a little bit about this person. This person is known in their community as a warrior. Uh, and as many people did during, out, during this pandemic, uh, 
this person suffered this great personal loss and professional loss, but they persevered and they remained steadfast and focused on the need for of, of young people. And this passion drove this person to not to stop in doing what they needed to do to ensure not only the children, but the entire community had what they needed during a very, very tough time. You know, other words that come to mind when I think about our recipient today is words like leadership, grit, determination, and, and, and a person that stands up at, at regardless of, of what the obstacles are to ensure that, again, young people are safe and they have what they need to succeed. So it is my honor, personal honor, to present the Promise Award for Leadership Excellence, which goes to Vilma Calderon. So let's take a few moments to learn a, a little bit more about Vilma. Vilma Calderon lost her husband a few years ago, and when the COVID-19 pandemic began, she also lost her income as a chef. At age 51, Vilma was alone, managing multiple health issues, and didn't have a lot of opportunities. She lives in a high-risk area on the outskirts of the capital city of Guatemala. It's considered a red zone due to high rates of poverty and crime. But despite Vilma's challenges, she never lost hope. As the pandemic unfolded, she developed new ways to promote her cooking, bringing food directly to people in her community. She noticed that children were constantly out playing soccer, and that they needed programs and safe spaces during such difficult times. Vilma contacted Club de Niños y Niños de Centro America to ask about providing programming. As much as Vilma loved to cook, she loved supporting children in her community even more. Vilma became an instructor for the club and helped create programming in her area. She stood up to gangs and earned a respect of the community. Everyone now knows that Vilma is a warrior, a force to be reckoned with, who will not allow any obstacle to get in the way of making her community better and stronger. Vilma's constant smile and community and trust building skills allowed the program to build and serve more children despite the challenges of COVID-19. Through her leadership, determination, and grit, Vilma now provides programming four times a week to nearly 100 children. Congratulations to Vilma Calderon of Club de Niños y Niñas de Centro America for receiving the first ever World Federation of Youth Clubs Promise Award for Leadership Excellence. So again, my personal congratulations to Vilma. Thank you so much for being a warrior and a champion for, for young people. We're so proud of what you've accomplished and we know you will do so much more for young people going forward. Congratulations, Stephen and Vilma. You embody what it means to be a youth development professional. Thank you for your dedication to building and saving young lives and building future leaders. Our final category is youth, honoring some of the world's youngest change makers. We have three awardees. First, Alawale Makajula will present the Youth Inspiration Award. He will be followed by Mona Dixon, who will present the Youth Changemaker Award. Alawale will return to present the final Promise Award for the Youth Dream Big Award. Greetings from Nigeria. 
from Abuja, Nigeria. My name is Olali Makajola from the One Campaign. And I am excited to be part of this year's Promise Award and why young people. They have continued to show determination, commitment, and resilience in their fight to make this world a better place. And that is why we say in Nigeria, the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. Our first youth award for youth inspiration is about someone whose story is one of determination, doggedness, and the fight to make his life and what uh, a better one in spite of what the society had in stock for him. And his story actually resonated more with me. And I believe it will inspire lots of young people from across the world. It is my pleasure to announce that the Youth Inspiration Award goes to Marcos Daniel Moreno Yax from the club, the Ninos Ininas, the Central America. Let's learn more about Marcos. 12-year-old Marcos Daniel Moreno Hax lives in an area of high poverty and crime in Guatemala. It is believed that his mother left when he was young to try and find her family a better life in the U.S., but she was never seen again. Marcos and his three brothers live with their grandmother, who prepares food to sell on the streets as the family's only income. Marcos wakes up early each morning to help his grandmother prepare, carry, and sell food so they can maintain their home. With minimal resources, a fluctuating daily income, and his grandmother managing major health issues, Marcos often struggled in school and acted out. But even at a young age, Marcos has proven himself to be a true fighter, whose hard work and dedication to his grandmother and brothers is remarkable. He found a safe haven at Club de Niños y Niñas, which helped to encourage his tenacity and change his trajectory. With stability and support from the club team, Marcos has had exceptional improvements in his grades and behavior. He says the club is helping him learn to believe in himself, and he wants to do that for others. His brothers now look up to him as a role model and consider him to be brave and strong. And his grandmother says that for the first time, she sees real hope for his future. Marcos now dreams of becoming a successful businessman to support his family and wants to inspire others to work hard and achieve their dreams. Congratulations to Marcos Daniel Moreno Cox of the Club de Niños y Niñas de Central America for receiving the first ever World Federation of Youth Clubs Promise Award for Youth Inspiration. Congratulations, Marcus. You inspire me and lots of other young people from across the world. Hi, everyone. I'm so honored to join my friend Ola in presenting the next Youth Award. My name is Mona Dixon, and I'm with the Inspired by Mona Foundation, located in Phoenix, Arizona, in the United States. I have the pleasure of announcing the next Youth Award recipient, and I'm extremely excited to do this because I'm passionate about youth and what they're doing all over the world, and I think it's extremely important for us to recognize them so they continue to make a difference and continue to do all that hard work that they're, they're, they're doing to change the world. This next recipient took it upon himself to create this platform that allowed over 240 youth to still have access to their education, still complete their homework, still study despite what was happening during COVID, despite not having access to Wi-Fi or to their computers using the WhatsApp um, app for everyone. So it is my pleasure to present the next Promise Award to the youth change maker, Evans Acorpo. So please, let's take a moment to learn a little bit more about Evans. Evans Arcafel is from Gamoa Dago, a fishing community on the central Ghanaian coast. His parents are subsistence farmers who struggle to support their family, but Evans has learned to be content with what he has. After performing poorly on his fifth grade exams, Evans decided to dedicate more time to his education. This led to an extraordinary love of learning and teaching. When COVID lockdowns closed schools, classes were provided on television. 
But Evans knew that most students like himself did not have access to television and would not be able to participate. Evans had no cell phone, but had been saving the little bits of money he was given to buy food at school to purchase a used one. At age 17, Evans knew exactly how he could help his fellow students during the pandemic. He could teach. Using WhatsApp, Evans created an online learning platform teaching daily lessons in subjects like English, math, science, economics, and literature by using audio, video, and text messaging. Though internet access is sparse, Evans found a place in his community where he can stand and prepare lessons. He provides his students with assignments and quizzes, tutoring, counseling, and invites area professionals to give career guidance. To ensure that his students are home safe and not roaming the community, he offers his lessons from 8 to 10 p.m. He now teaches nearly 250 students from across Ghana through his Evans Online Learning Platform. Congratulations to Evans Arkerful of the Boys and Girls Club of Ghana for receiving the first ever World Federation of Youth Clubs Promise Award for Youth Changemaker. But I'm afraid to tell you that I'm excited. You have won, you have won, you have won the Promise Award for the Youth category. And it's, it's like globally. Global is best youth. Youth award, you got it. You got it. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> Wow, I hope that you are just as proud of Evans as I am. He is absolutely amazing, did incredible work, and I'm so, so, so honored and pleased once again to award him with this great honor. So once again, congratulations, Evans, and please, please keep up the great work. And now let's hand it back over to my friend, Ola. Hi guys, I'm pleased to be back to present the final award of the 2021 Promise Awards, and that is the Youth Dream Big Award. Yes, we all need to dream big to allow us make huge dreams. And this is another inspiring story about someone who dreamt big and now she's winning big. Our final Youth Award goes to someone whose story tells us nothing is impossible with or without your parent. She's special. And that is why when she dreams, she wins and gives all of us something to hold on to. The Promise Youth Award for Youth, uh, the Dream Big Award goes to direct Sophia Emosa Camacho from the club, the Ninos, Ininas de Caguan. Let's learn more about Ire. Jira Sophia Hermosa Camacho is 11 years old and in sixth grade. She lives with her grandmother in the city of Neva in central Colombia. Jirith loves to play with her friends, ride her bike, read, do homework, and play in the river. When Jirith was very young, her grandmother received a phone call informing her that her daughter had been kidnapped by gorillas. The pain and loss of Jirith's mother is still present. Jirith and her grandmother have lived together, just the two of them, for the last eight years. They call each other mother and daughter, and often write and sing songs together to create positivity. Soñando, sigo soñando. <laughs> Two years ago, Jirith found an extended family at the Club de Niños y Niñas del Caguan. The club has been a great outlet for her creativity and talents. Jirith has a strong desire to learn and participate in activities like reading contests and music programs, and has discovered a love of theater. And even though Jirith and her grandmother struggle to get by, they are always willing to support the efforts of the club children and staff. Despite the challenges Jirith has faced, her patience, charisma, and eagerness to learn and be involved make her a leader among her peers. The club staff say her positivity and infinite desire to be better every day make her a shining light in their lives. They see a very bright future for Jirith. Congratulations to Jirith Sofia Hermosa Camacho of the Club de Niños y Niñas del Caguan for receiving the first ever World Federation of Youth Clubs Dream Big Promise Award. Hola, hola, felicito.
Felicitaciones, muy bien. Eh, pues yo les quiero contar a todos que yo soy una niña muy alegre, muy feliz, muy agradecida y pues yo les quiero decir a todos ustedes que eh, yo, yo tengo muchos sueños, he cumplido algunos de ellos y los seguiré cumpliendo. Y esto les quiero decir a todos, jóvenes, adultos, niños, que así el mundo se le haga difícil. Eh, que sigan adelante con su sueño y por último le quería dar las gracias al club de, de, de niños y niñas del Caguán Congratulations Sofía you have given us hope and you are definitely part of the leaders of heart tomorrow Wow these are just absolutely inspirational stories um, congratulations to Sofía Oh my goodness, she's only 11 years old. And Evans, 18 years old, and the work he's doing to provide learning opportunities for young people during the pandemic. And then Marcos, 12 years old, and being a leader in his community. I, I can't tell you how, I, how inspired I am uh, to know that it's these kind of young people that exist. And I'm reminded of Elizabeth's message about dreaming big. And I want to say thank you to these young people for dreaming big, but not just about themselves, but dreaming big for others. So congratulations. And congratulations to all of the 2021 Promise Award winners. We are so inspired and hope you are too. This is just the beginning of our journey to support youth clubs around the world. We invite you to join us in March at our 2022 annual conference. And now I'd like to bring to the virtual stage, Rick Goings, the founder of the World Federation of Youth Clubs to share some closing remarks. Hi everybody. I'm sitting here reading over all the submissions to the Promise Awards and uh, I'm thrilled to be part of this award celebration. Actually, it's amazing. It's only been two years since we launched the World Federation of Youth Clubs. And to now be coming out with the Promise Awards, well, it's ahead of schedule. When I look back uh, more than 10 years ago, when Glenn Permoy, Susan, and I really created this World Federation of Youth Club, at least the early stages, uh, we were, you know, in the US. 4,000 plus clubs with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, but only 5% of the world's population lives in the US. And we said, you know what, we've got to find a way to bring together each of these clubs outside the US that are trying to get started, the power of collaboration. And what the vision was that we would develop, enhance and advance uh, by putting together this network, the power of people coming together. And the Promise Awards are very, very much a part of that. As a matter of fact, from experience, many of the best ideas in youth clubs, they don't come from some headquarters. They come from you who are engaged with youth out there in the clubs. And what we try to do is mine those ideas constantly being uh, aware of what's happening, what's working, what's not working, and to find those things that really seem to be moving things forward, and then to scale them up by replicating them in other markets uh, of the world. The other thing we really wanted to see happen was the clubs out there are the really the spawning grounds for leadership for other positions going forward. Many people that become heads of youth organizations which, which have multiple units started with one. And some that became head of national organizations also started with one. So the Promise Awards are a part of the fabric of all of this. I'm proud of our uh, 
winners, but also I want to say to those uh, others, every submission was a winner in my view. And we're going to find ways to actually even recognize those who are nominated, uh, but maybe not winners uh, in, in the future. For those seven who are winning this year, we're going to be giving you a wonderful recognition plaque, but importantly too, your affiliate organization will receive financial support. So this is all good and it's all part of how we're gonna build this going forward. We're in 39 countries, but there's 200 countries in the world. So we've got a lot of work to do and we've got work to do in your country so that all youth have an opportunity to participate and have access to a youth club, that they have a safe space where they can see caring adults, they can learn new skills, they can become engaged and have fun and, and, and learn. Uh, and they create an attitude of wanting to give back. All good. Anyway, thank you for your participation. And I look forward to seeing you, even if virtually, at the annual conference. Thank you for what you do.